Well, community is a funny phenomenon because we think of the tribal organization as a original impulse around people getting together and that was about survival and then then there was this idea that we get together to share ideas and out of that comes religion and social practices and and the nation state the future of what community looks like is going to be people who actually see themselves as more valuable together than they are necessarily isolated and with digitization and virtual pushing us into more isolated space. The future of community is going to be highly interactive and highly liquid, meaning that we're going to be linked not necessarily by a common belief system. We're not necessarily going to be linked based on a nationality, but we're going to be linked based on the things that we care about experiencing. And so it's going to have a new look and feel that's going to be about looking and feeling as humans. So trusted networks are enabled when people realize that withholding information no longer serves as a determinant of value. The expert is considered valued because they have a scarce resource called their knowledge that they can share. And because of that, they're valued. The expert in the future is actually going to be the person who has the most perspective meaning that that depth of experience and the breadth of experience is going to be driving the value. And the challenge inside of that trusted network is to understand what's proprietary anymore. What is the value of the thing that you don't want shared as an experience versus the thing that you do want shared? We see the emergence of that already in digital privacy questions. But as we move forward, that's going to cover an enormous swath of the human experience where we try to understand what it means to control, manage, and manipulate information. Well, work is a funny thing. I think Adam Smith's 1776 innovation called rent-based engagement, which is essentially, I give you time, you give me money, is actually going the same way as the rest of the Industrial Revolution. I think that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be engaging for purposeful experience. So the, the work, if you will, of the future will not be as much work as it will be purposeful engagement. And that purposeful engagement will be, how do you create an environment in which my contribution of my creativity and my energy is actually feeding me not just a surrogated rent, a, a, a wage, but you're giving me access to a world of travel maybe, or a world of experience, or a network of friends, or what have you. So what I'm going to be seeing now is not I have to get paid maximum dollar for the unit time, but I'm now going to be exchanging my creativity and energy for unit experience. And that's a fundamental transformation of how we think about our engagement with what we've called the workplace. Well, if we think of the way humanity has been in the past, humanity has denigrated the experience of being human. When we do something that we say is slightly off color or off axis, we say, oh, we're only being human. Humanity of the future needs to celebrate humanity. We actually need to see humanity as a distinction of the elevation of our best self, not the denigration of our worst self. And as we think about what that humanity looks like, it means that we're going to fundamentally respectfully engage each other by seeing the value that we bring rather than the difference that we exploit.